Amen. Welcome back, Sue. Can we celebrate Sue for that selection? Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us all be glad and rejoice in it. Let everything that have breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Uh, people of God, can you put your hands together for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? Can we celebrate Jesus this morning? Amen. This is our call to worship. This is an opportunity for all of us to come together and worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. I don't know about you, but this was some week. This previous week was some week. So I promise you, I'm just happy to be in the house of the Lord. So if you all don't want to praise him, I'll praise him for myself and for you all today. All right. Do we have any first time visitors this morning? Any first time visitors? Amen. Can you stand so we can acknowledge you? We won't put you on the spot. We just want to clap and celebrate you being here with us today. Amen. Thank you so much for coming. And I understand that you will be singing later. So we are looking forward to that. Amen. Any other visitors this morning? Okay. We are all family. Well, whether you are here in person or you are worshiping with us online, we welcome you to Dumfries United Methodist Church. And this is a place where everyone is welcome. Amen. Are there any birthdays today or this coming week? Any birthdays? Yes, sir. When is your birthday? April 7th, happy birthday happy to you. Birthday. Wait, he has something else he wants to say. Go ahead, sir. Say it again. <laughs> yes, you ask, actually, you look 30 years old, and so we celebrate you on this morning. And we love, love, I love the way you take care of your beautiful wife, and we just celebrate you. Can we celebrate this family? Okay, um, April birthdays. Well, I don't know if she's here today, but Mary Bell will be celebrating her birthday on April 11th uh, this coming week. And happy birthday to all of the April birthdays. Any anniversaries of any type? All right, she said me. What is the anniversary? 18? 18 years? 18 years of marriage. Can we clap for 18 years of marriage? Awesome. Continue to bless your union. Any other anniversaries? Okay, seeing none. Anyone returning for the first time since a recent illness? Okay, bless God. We thank God for healing and keeping us. Uh, let us continue to keep the following individuals in our prayers. Uh, Mrs. Raquel, as she continues to heal. Uh, Dee's brother, and I do not see Dee, so hopefully everything is okay, but Dee's brother who is recovering from surgery and is still in Virginia Hospital Center. Uh, for my dad, Jesse Porter, who is also recovering from surgery in the same hospital. Uh, prayers for Melva Willis, who is dealing with some major health challenges. Uh, I had an opportunity to speak with her on last Tuesday, and I will. we had a really nice discussion, and I will continue to check on her. So let us continue to pray for all of those individuals, praying for their complete healing and restoration according to the will of God. Amen? Amen. Bread and Fishes will resume tomorrow at 5 o'clock p.m. If you would like to volunteer your time to help out with the Bread and Fishes family, we invite you to come out tomorrow at 5 o'clock p.m., or you can come a little before 5. Uh, also, regarding outreach, we will provide dinner to individuals staying at the Hilder uh, Hilder Bark Shelter on June 15th and 29th. If you would like to cook, donate, or serve those participants, please see Dee Brown. I was going to say see her after church, but you can contact Dee Brown, or whenever you see her, just let her know that you would like to help out. Thank you to all of our volunteers who continue to support our Reach Beyond Ministries. To God be the glory for the ability for us to be able to serve the community. Amen. All right, those are our weekly announcements. Please let us govern ourselves accordingly as we continue in this worship experience. Uh, today, in alignment with our sermon series, we will explore what God is revealing to us through the scriptures about 
how we should live. Uh, last Sunday, we celebrated the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And in order to celebrate him, we had to believe that Jesus was born, suffered, died, and was resurrected for our sins. Amen. So since we know that we believe that, the question is, now what? Uh, now what? Well, now we get to live out what we believe. So today, during our message and prayerfully during our worship experience, we can all reflect on how we live out our faith and our everyday beliefs and actions. Uh, and with that said, let us stand for our call to worship and open in prayer. How shall we live when shadows gather? What was hidden had been revealed. We are woven together with all creation. When we live in the light, as God is in the light, we are one with each other. Let us worship God, who is our light and salvation. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Most holy and righteous God, we come before you on this beautiful Sunday morning, grateful for the gift of life. God, thank you for allowing us to assemble in your presence. We pray that you would help us to worship you, God, in spirit and in truth. Uh, Lord, today we are reminded of the enduring reality of your word, a word that was with you from the beginning, a word that was God, and a word that was God. So as we move further into this worship experience, we ask that you would help us to open our hearts and minds to your truth. And through the preach word today, help us to have an even deeper understanding of your son, Jesus Christ, and the eternal life that he offers. Help us to understand what it truly means to walk in your light, to be in fellowship with you, and to experience the cleansing power of your son's sacrifice. Grant us, Lord, the honesty to confess our sins and the humility to accept your forgiveness. May your word, God, be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path, guiding us ever closer to you. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Here 
to say that you're my God and all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for bringing us into the light of your Son, Jesus Christ. And even the days that it's dark and gloomy and rainy, we still see the light because he shines through us. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for today, for being able to share in this experience of worship with each other. And Father, I ask that you help us Emit the light to all unbelievers so that they can truly see what your salvation is. In the name of Jesus Christ, we ask this. Amen. We're going to sing the next hymn, verses 1, 2, and 4. And during this time, if you'd like to bring your offering up, please. Amen. Let us pray. Generous God, as we gather to offer our tithes and offerings, we are reminded of the words of the Apostle John about the word of life. Just as your word brings light into our lives, may our giving be an act of generosity, a reflection of the abundance of your grace and love. We thank you, God, for the forgiveness and grace offered through your son, Jesus Christ, and as we give, may we also use these gifts wisely for the betterment of your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you are able to continue standing, please do so for the scripture, but you're also welcome to sit. Our scripture today is taken from the New International Version, 1 John Chapter, chapter 1, verses 5 through 10. This is the message we have heard from him and declare to you, God is light. In him 
there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him and yet walk in darkness, we lie and do not live out the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. If we claim we have not sinned, we make him out to be a liar, and his word is not in us. This is the word of God. God. You may be seated. Thank you. Pray Jesus and our wonderful guest singer today. Can we clap for them? Amen. Let us pray. Most holy and righteous God, thank you so much for allowing us to come into your presence. God, thank you for each and every person worshiping with us in person and online. 
God, thank you for what you have already done in the service, and we pray, Lord, that you would bless what is to come. God, I pray that you would open our ears today so that we may hear what you are saying to us both individually and as a collective body in Christ. Lord, please help us today to keep our minds stayed on you. Finally, I pray that you would speak through me so that I can provide a message that will be encouraging, but also transforming for your people, Lord. God, I pray that ultimately someone will desire more of you and your love after participating in this worship experience. It is in the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Our focus passage of scripture for today is in the first letter of John, chapter 1, verses 5 through 10. Those scriptures have already been read in your hearing, and I will refer to them throughout the message. Our sermon series is titled, How Shall We Live? How Shall We Live? That's the sermon series. Our sermon title for today is, Walk in the Light. Walk in the light. Brothers and sisters, have you ever been in a dark place in your life? Now, I'm not necessarily talking about dark places in life that are beyond our control, but I'm talking about those dark places that we actually walk into on our own. So whether it was self-inflicted or inflicted by another, whether you know it or not, God was with you, even in the dark moments. How do you know that, Pastor? Well, because if God were not with all of us in our dark moments, we would not be here today. Amen? In addition, in all those dark times, most likely if you got out of them, which we know you did because you're here, God used someone to help us get out. Uh, so, yes, God does not come down to earth to help us every time we get in trouble himself, but God uses people to help us. Oh, and if you think you've never been in a dark place, I'm sorry to inform you that we were all in a dark place. And in case you're wondering, what, what is this dark place you're referring to? Well, people of God, the dark place is called sin. That sin, yes, something we don't like to talk about anymore, but all of us have sinned and all of us will sin again. Now, my sin may not look like your sin and your sin may differ from my sin, but all of us sin and all of us before accepting Christ, we're living in sin. But can somebody say, but God? Okay, well, y'all don't have to say it. I'll say it for you. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus, for saving all of us from our sins. Now, let's move into the text before you all get mad at me for talking about sin. Uh, the first letter of John, chapter 1, verses 5 through 10. This letter does not necessarily have the elements of a letter, um, but it is a letter, and it was assumed by many to be written by John. John, also known as the disciple whom Jesus loved, most likely wrote this letter at the end of his long life. And for those of you who may not know, or for those of you who may be interested, John lived longer um, than all of the other disciples, and John was the only disciple who died of a natural death. Now, while John is assumed to be the author in this letter, you will see the word we used and wonder, well, if John is writing this, who is the we in, this, in these verses? So when you see the word we use, that's most likely referring to a circle of teachers and other believers who were faithful and walking with the disciple John. So moving on in this letter, John seemed to be intentionally focused on how others interpreted salvation through Jesus Christ. Why? Well, because as you know, just like today, some people believed in Jesus and some did not. Some knew God and some did not. Some believed in salvation through Jesus Christ, but some were not certain what it meant to follow Jesus. So as a result of these misunderstandings or these unbeliefs taught by some of the false teachers, the author of this letter of John did the same thing that was done in the gospel of John. Well, what did he do? Well, if you go back to verse 1 of our focus scripture, John quickly establishes who God is. John reminds us that in the beginning of the Christian faith, God was and is. 
He went back letting us know that God existed from the very beginning of time. He reminds us about the relationship between the Father God and the Son Jesus and his son Jesus. Ultimately, John is reminding us, church, that Jesus is the very light of the world. He says, we have heard him with our ears. We have looked at him with our eyes. We've touched him with our hands. In fact, eternal life with the Father was revealed to us. So again, why is he sharing this information? Well, John wanted the people at that time to have real fellowship with God. He wanted believers to have abiding joy forever. Anyone in here have abiding joy like all day long forever? I see one hand in the back. Thank you, Marjorie, for raising your hand. (laughs) He wanted us to have abiding joy forever. Uh, He was not hoping for some temporary gratification. John shared this so that our joy, saints, can be complete in Jesus Christ. So moving down to verses 5 through 10, our focus scriptures for today, John begins verse 5 by essentially saying, This is the message God gave us, and God wants us to give this message to you. Well, what is the message that John has given them? Well, John is not here to answer the question, so I'll help you out and answer it for you. Uh, Number one, John is saying he's reminding them that we must know who God is. Well, who is God? And you might say, oh, Pastor Crystal, we know who God is. Well, okay. But apparently, God felt like we needed this reminder, and I truly that even though we know who God is, sometimes we forget who God is. Anyone here ever forget who God is? Okay, don't answer that question. I think Ms. Catherine said no. Okay, well, you all may not want to be honest, but I'll prove to you later that sometimes we forget who God is. Uh, For those of us who do not know uh, who God is, or for those of us who sometimes forget, God is light, church, and there is no darkness in him. God is light. Light is a common symbol for holiness. Light exposes the truth. Light is pure. Light is the perfection of God. So unless we actually walk in God's image and walk in the light, then that means sometimes we actually forget who we are in Christ and we forget who God is. Anytime we're walking in darkness, we have to wonder, what are we thinking about who God is? God is light. Now, I know someone, there is no light, by the way, without God. And I know someone thinks that they can walk in the light and they can shine without God. And so I'm sorry, please forgive me. I actually hate to blow out your candle, but I have to touch that God's light is the light that guides us into righteousness. We cannot guide ourselves. Why? Because our very nature is sinful. Yes, we are sinful, but God is completely righteous. Anything that we do, church, anything that we do that's right, it's because God is guiding us. So when we're not doing right, guess who is guiding us? I have to take off my glasses. Y'all know who's guiding us when we're not doing right. Okay, I don't have to say it. Y'all already know who it is. But people of God, in order to walk in the light, we must be in fellowship with God. Now, see, I know some of us um, know who God is by definition, but that does not mean we are in fellowship with him. 1 John 1, 6 says that if we say we have fellowship with him, While we are walking in darkness, now I didn't say this, the Bible said this, it says we lie and do not know what is true. If we say we are in fellowship with God and continue to walk in darkness, we are not in fellowship with him. And if we say we are, the Bible says that we are lying. This is harsh language. I know I had to deal with this when I was studying it, so don't worry about it. Um, What is darkness? Well, I already told you that darkness is sin. But in a little more detail, darkness is anything that displeases or separates us from being in fellowship with God. If we say, church, that we are in fellowship with God and we do not do the things that God told us to do, we are in darkness and we are not in fellowship with him. If we do the things that are displeasing to God, then there's got to be a way to get back to God. How do we get back to God? I'm glad you asked that question. We get back to God by confessing our sins and turning away from them. Uh, I heard someone say confession is good for the soul. How many of you think confession is good for the soul? Okay. All right. That's most of you. 
someone else might say, well, pastor, I believe in Jesus, so why in the world would I need to confess my sins? Well, I'm glad you asked that question as well. Yes, Jesus Christ is our righteous God. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not only for our sins, but for the sins of the whole world, according to 1 John 2, 1 and 2. However, it is important to confess, and not just confess, but be honest about our sins so God can forgive us. Also, the Bible tells us, and you might not like this, but the Bible says to confess our sins to one another as well. Why do we do that? We do that so the effectual and fervent prayers of the righteous can heal us. So church confession is warranted to God and sometimes to one another. And if you're wondering why we're talking about this, we're talking about this because after we accept Christ, after we believe on him, after we celebrate Easter, we still have a responsibility to walk in the light of Jesus. Amen. We cannot walk with God and not be in fellowship with God. Um, is there anybody that you walk with that you're attached to, that you're married to, that you don't talk to? Well, I hope not. Hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully not, okay? All right. So anybody that we're in fellowship with, uh, that person expects us to have a relationship with them. I can know you. I'll use Miss Catherine because she's a mommy user. I can know Miss Catherine, but if I never talk to her, never speak to her, never encourage her, I'm really not in fellowship with her. Okay. Yes, the same God that we celebrated last week desires for us to be in fellowship with him by keeping his commandments. How do I know if I love God? I know that I love God when I keep his commandments. Now, back in those days, there were some false teachers, and today we have that may tell you otherwise. They may say that as long as I come to church, I don't need to be in fellowship with God or anyone else. They may say, well, I can sit at home and watch church. I don't need to be in fellowship with anyone. Um, that's, that's, that's problematic in and of itself, unless you're not able to come to the building. But just imagine if all of us serving the community just sat at home. There will be no one to serve the community. There will be no one to make disciples. There will be no one to walk in the light. So I hope I'm convicting everybody who, who just, just doesn't want to fellowship. We are called, we have been saved to fellowship with God first and foremost and to fellowship with one another. All right, let me get back to my notes. Um, people may say, false teachers may tell you that once you confess Christ, um, that there's no longer sin. Um, the devil may tell you that as long as you are not committing certain sins, you're good. As long as you're not out here committing murder, uh, what are some of the big ones that we talk about? Any, any sexual sins, as long as you're not doing all those things, we're good. No, sin is anything that displeases God. Um, Satan may convince you to focus on someone else's walk. You know we are good at pointing out the sins of others. We are good at pointing out the darkness in others. We are good at identifying who might not be walking in the light of Jesus. Now, do you know that we can literally be walking in darkness while pointing the finger at others? Okay, just look straight ahead. I won't, you won't, I won't know you. I'm talking about you. Okay, verse 8 says that if we have no sin, the Bible says this, if we say we have no sin, he says we just sin. We sin, not only does it say we sin, he says we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Oh, but thank God for verse 9. Verse 9 says that if we confess our sins, he, meaning Jesus, is faithful and just and will forgive us of our sins and forgive us all from unrighteousness. So thank God that we can go to God and ask for forgiveness and receive it. We might go to a human and they may not forgive us, but oh, when we go to God, God forgives us. Uh, thank God for his faithfulness toward us. Thank God for being a just God. Thank God that he just does not forgive some of our sins, but the Bible says that God will forgive them all. That means all of our sins. Verse 10, if we say we have not sinned, not only are we liars, that's one part of it, but then it says we're suggesting 
that God is a liar. And I know none of us in here want to call God a liar. But of course, if we make God a liar, his word is not in us. This is the Bible. This is the scripture. If we make God a liar, his word is not in us, and we have no fellowship with him. God is saying if we walk around acting like we're not with sin and we don't confess our sins, that we're not in fellowship with him. I heard someone say recently that people say, and I've said this before too, oh, I just hate when someone lies to me. But we actually lie to ourselves and others probably daily. So make no mistake about it. Believing that Jesus is the light, believing that he is the savior, believing that he was born, that he died, and that he rose again, that's just one part of our journey. The other piece to believing is obeying his commandments. Amen? So we have to know who God is. We have to walk in fellowship with God. And then lastly, we must walk in fellowship with one another. We must walk in fellowship with one another. I don't know if you remember this, but I told you when I first got here that everything we do hinges on God's first and second commandments. Ultimately, God is saying to us again, over and over again, love me, fall in love with me, love your neighbor as you love yourself, and everything else will work out if we just do those two things. But how many of you know that loving your neighbor and being in fellowship with one another is sometimes difficult? Okay. It's hard, but because Jesus is the light, we can do this. If we think that we're the light in and of ourselves, then we'll never be able to do it. Everything that we do right, we need the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit to help us. So if we're going to walk in the light with Jesus, we have to walk in fellowship with one another. Now, Jesus did not put any description on the one another. Because you all know we want to walk in fellowship with some people, but not walk in fellowship with the other right? So he didn't say walk in fellowship with all the good people, all the people who do not sin. He said walk in fellowship with one another. Now, I'm not going to mess with you all and tell you who that one another includes, but I think you all get the picture. All right. I can imagine God saying, I gave my only son. I allowed him to shed blood to die for you, and all I ask you to do is walk in the light. All I'm asking is that you walk with one another. Love me and walk with one another. Walk in my light and fellowship with each other. Well, in more detail, what does that really mean? Well, first, we have to be on one accord. The Bible says, how can we walk together unless we agree? So we have to agree on something. We won't agree on all things, but we definitely have to agree on who God is and what walking with God means. So walking in the light means living according to God's will. If we don't agree on that, then that means we're striving for two different things. When we do agree on that, we are walking in the light for a common purpose. Can you imagine being in fellowship with someone every day, all day, and you believe in Jesus and they don't? How do we walk in fellowship? We acknowledge that none of us are right outside of the righteousness of God. We confess our shortcomings and we forgive one another. Even if you do not think you've done anything wrong, sometimes it's just good to say, I'm sorry, I apologize, please forgive me. God's shared experience of grace. We have a shared experience of grace with God. We have a shared um, experience of grace. All of us, and that all of us have been forgiven. We all share that, so that should prompt all of us to fellowship with one another. That should prompt all of us to support one another. That should prompt all of us to encourage one another on this journey or this following of God's path. Walk in the light. So in conclusion, and Sue, you could start coming up. We need to know God. Um, the question was, how do we live? Well, we need God in order to live in the light of God. In order to live in the light of God, we must know God. But knowing God is not enough. We must be in fellowship with God. In order to be in fellowship with God, we must be honest with ourselves about our sins. 
we must acknowledge our sinfulness. And when we fail to do that, guess what? We hinder our fellowship with God. We hinder and we prevent God from forgiving us. If we don't, if we're not honest with God, we don't confess to God, then we don't give God the opportunity to forgive us. Church forgiveness is not a one-time thing when we accept Christ. Forgiveness is an ongoing process. There's only one person in this universe without sin, and that is God. So we will continue to sin, but in the name of Jesus, we should try to avoid sin as much as possible. At least we should be able to say, I sin less than I did yesterday. <laughs> The good news in all of this is that Jesus, the perfect light, is on our side. Jesus, the perfect light, is always with us. Jesus is our advocate. Jesus is our high priest. Jesus is our intercessor. Jesus is faithful to us. Amen? Let us pray. Everlasting God, thank you so much for revealing your truth to us through the words of John. May we continue to walk in the light of your fellowship. May we continue, God, to not forget who you are. May we continue to experience the transforming power of your forgiveness, and may we continue to forgive ourselves and others. Grant us the strength to live according to your will. Grant us the strength to turn away from darkness and to become beacons of your light in this world. Lord, we pray and we ask you all these things in Jesus' name. Let the people of God say amen. Amen. Now we are preparing for our communion. As you know, this is Communion Sunday, and so we will prepare for that at this time. At this time, uh, Ms. Catherine and uh, let's see, Fred, oh, Ms. Patty Ray's coming uh, to help out with communion. And we can all stand and prepare to come and get the elements. And then we will go over the communion information together.
and we are preparing together. If you would like to take communion at your seat, that's fine. If you would like to take it at the altar, that's fine too. As Sue is playing, we can use this time to examine ourselves. We can use this time to confess our sins to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Page nine in your hymnal. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you. Father, almighty creator of heaven and earth, you formed us in your image. You breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. Your Spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate the sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made us with the new covenant by water and the Spirit. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread and gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ and one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory. And we feast at his heavenly banquet through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Let us now say the Lord's Prayer. And I realize that it's a little different in here, but we can say it however you want to say it. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. 
Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And deliver us from temptation, and deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body, and we all partake of this one loaf. The bread which we break is the sharing in of the body of Christ. The cup over which we give thanks is a sharing in the blood of Christ. At this time, we are going to partake together. The body of Christ given for you. Let us pray. The blood of Christ given for you. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant us that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, let the people of God say, Amen. Amen. Let us stand for our benediction. Brothers and sisters, I encourage you today to go and walk in the light. Even when we mess up, continue to walk in the light of Jesus, understanding that Jesus is the perfect light. Love will come in perfection in us when we can face the day of judgment without fear, because our relationship to this world is just like Christ. There is no fear in love, for perfect love Will drive out the fear. Again, I encourage you to go shine the light of your love upon all and ask God to reveal the goodness of his creation. In Jesus' name, again, let us all say amen. amen.